Hey, how's everybody doing? Just come back on here from doing another video. Uh, just want to spend this morning doing a couple of videos uh, that God uh, put on my heart uh, or that was in my mind. Um, now, one of them is the Feast of Trumpets. Um, so, uh, the Bible talks about seeing the day approaching. And um, that means... You know, you, you're driving on the road and you're headed to a big city, you know, San Francisco, um, Atlanta, you know, Chicago, New York. And before you get there, you see the, you see the big, tall buildings and you, and you see the, you know, me and my kids, we went to a family reunion a couple of years ago and it was the same same we went exactly the same course as the the eclipse so i think we went to the family union in 2016 and we went to the same course the only thing we didn't do is go cross cross oregon that's the only thing we didn't do that was that was different but i checked out the cities and we went through the whole course of the eclipse so i think that was something god was trying to relate to me about the end times. Um, there was a book, and back in, when I first first got saved, I won't say first got saved, but when I when I got started walking with God, uh, I was work, I was at Job Corps, and then I, I started working for Job Corps, and then there was this book. It was called The Feast of the Lord. So I said, what is this book? What is this book? So I never bought the book, but I seen it plenty of times between... 94, let me check up here. 94, there's always this this eagle, this bird, the hawk bird or whatever, vulture is always on here when I get ready to do a video. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I, I didn't never get the book, never got the book up until this year. I got the book this year and it was, it was called The Feast of the Lord. And it explained Passover, Unlimited Bread, First Fruit, Pentecost, Feast of Trumpets, uh, Yom Kippur, and Tabernacles. And the thing that I see today is, what I do today is I say whatever is true, whatever the mainstream is saying, whatever uh, everybody's saying, reverse it. Even, even the watchers. <laughs> even the watchers so how do you find tr the truth whatever the mainstream christianity is saying reverse it that's that's the truth but you find your truth out of the bible i'm making i'm being sarcastic or i'm being serious at the same time um no man knows day and hour is the name of the feast of trumpets that's that's the general name so when jesus is saying to the church just in, i think it was just in matthews he says, no man knows the day and hour, not even the angels, not, but only the Father only. He was speaking of, he was actually saying translation, I'm coming back in the Feast of Trumpets, be ready. That's what he was saying. Uh, the things that are happening now, uh, I told my wife, whenever Jesus Christ comes back, whatever year he comes back, it, Whatever it is, it'll start in the spring and then escalate into the fall. So what happened this year? It actually started in the winter, but but the true lockdown started in March. So I'm not trying to make myself right or wrong, but and I told her it could start earlier. So I I I, I told her that and 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 it's in the form of revelation knowledge, whatever you want to say it is, but yeah. So I told her, whatever year Jesus Christ comes back, whatever year, 2020, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, it's going to start in the spring and escalate into the fall. And then the rapture of the church will take place. So right now, we're living in 2020. I like to think of 2020 vision. Hindsight is 2020. Rapture, all that stuff, the, the, the you know... Um, judgments of God, wrath of God, revelations, 
when we get closer to it, we understand. When you drive closer to the city of Atlanta, you can see the buildings. You see what it looks like. You didn't see it way before that. You see all the signs on the street. You see the distance. 400 miles to Atlanta. 300 miles to Atlanta. 200 miles to Atlanta. 100 miles to Atlanta. And then when you see... You know, 25 miles to Atlanta and then 10 miles to Atlanta. And then you start to see, you can see the building slightly. And you see five miles to Atlanta, you can see them even bigger. And they start to get bigger and bigger until you get there. But you didn't know until you got there. A lot of people are against the Feast of Trumpets. They don't even pay attention to it. They, they, you know it's the truth because they, they just skip it right over. I had a brother who, who thinks every... Every day, every every single holiday, Jewish feast or whatever is is a chance for the Jesus to come back. But he he avoided doing one, which was the Feast of Trumpets. He just hopped right over that one. So you know that's probably what it is. The answer is the Feast of Trumpets is the answer. It's known as the day that no man knows. Just because we got it wrong in the past. Don't mean, I mean, it's not like we did 30 times when we got it wrong. I mean, some people have, but worldwide, it's only been like, you know, 2012, 2000, 2011, maybe 2017. And so some of you guys probably disagree with me, but if you go back to Jesus Christ being, uh, going up to heaven, ascending into heaven, they asked the question, "Is at this time, Lord, will you restore it? Because they didn't even know. So the devil wants to make everybody look bad. But the boy to cry wolf, if you, if, if you only see Bible prophecy at 2020, you only see it at another 2045 vision, or 2065 means you're really blind. When it's 2020, you see. The closer you get, you see. So we see through the glass dimly, and then the glass starts to clear up, and then we see. So I'm not making any many any excuses for people who make bad calls, but these these famous pastors they make they ostracize people. Well, how dare that's evil? That's very dangerous to, you know what? Telling people that you need to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood is very dangerous. I I just think even the mainstream preachers get it wrong. And I can, I, I'll see the ones that get it wrong and they'll get it wrong and then they'll come back and really bulldoze somebody who got it wrong. Okay, I've seen one past, I won't mention any names, I like the guy, but he's like got it really wrong at one point and then he kind of straightened it out and then he makes it look like he never got it wrong. Um, look, is it really dangerous to pick a day? Just think about this for a minute. If you go, if you love God enough, you really gonna walk. If you walk away, God is Jesus is gonna the, the, the modern day Jesus is gonna say, "Come back here. I'm gonna manlessly, recklessly come after you, recklessly love you." No, he will. He'll come back for the ninety nine, but he'll come back with a still small voice. It's not gonna be, "Oh, I'm running after you, and I'm gonna do everything I can to get to you." No, you have to make the decision to come back to God. But he's coming after you. He's going to send messages. He's going to send grandma. He's going to send people. But it's not going to be like coming after you like recklessly. It's going to come to you as a still small voice. And you have to you have to answer that call. If you're a backslider, he's coming. He's going to come look for you. But he's not going to come recklessly. God doesn't do anything recklessly. I love that song, though. Reckless love. I don't think God has reckless love. He has... God, people think God is just, I'm just going to come back at an hour that you think not. That's because nobody's thinking, no, nobody's studying, nobody thinks, you know, they despise prophecy. Uh, they despise prophecy. It says at the end of one of the books, it says, do not despise prophecy. So you get Pastor Dana, who is making you know, video of some dreams he had and people are despising him. Do not despise prophecy. Do not despise people who 
uh, Harold Camping, you know, you know, shame on him. He should, oh my God, he needs to repent and this and this. He, does he? And I mean, I don't know. I don't remember if he said God told him or not. If you say God told you that yeah, you need to repent. So a lot of people on YouTube need to repent because some people got some dreams that did not happen. Or the dreams may be going to happen, but it just hasn't happened yet. So people despise dreams. They despise. He says, "My, I heard these two pastors, awesome pastors. I like them. And they were saying, oh, Pastor Dana, you can't. And he, the guy was like, just getting beat, just getting into him. You can't do the, this is a, you know, my God. I'm going to say, look, dude, look, <laughs> look. You you you're sitting there and you're bashing Pastor Dana, Pat, whoever these pastors are doing, you know, dreams. What if God appointed him to actually have that dream? Just like he appointed you to preach or talk or have a podcast about the end times. You can't just automatically throw it out the window. And if you watch like um uh, what is that video called? What is that uh, documentary called? Uh, Converging. Great video. Watch Converging. Converging uh, talks about uh, the end times. It has this young girl, and she, she says she missed the rapture, and she's in this building, and she's telling the story. And um, anyway, at the end of the video, it talks about the Feast of Trumpets. <laughs> But then the same person came out with another video, and I can't remember the name, and it was okay video, but it came out with Pastor JD, Amir Safari, I think Jan Markell, and they're like, no one knows today in our heart. Dare, dare people say that, you know, remember Pastor JD, he started off believing the feature trumpets. I mean, is it a sin that you get it? No, it's not. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying this. We're going to see the day approaching. I have to get a fly out of here before you try to come in here. We're going to see the day approaching. We're going to see the day approaching. The exact day. Feast of Trump is this. This is the first time I've ever mentioned the date. This is the first time because I don't want to be date setting. God never said, so show me in the Bible where it says that you shouldn't date set. Show me. If you can, I'll be a happy guy. Show me it in the, in the comments. There is no, no place that he said you shouldn't date set. Did he, show me where it says it's dangerous. He said no man knows the day and hour. But you know he said more than in anything? He says at an hour that you think not. So what is that telling you? That somebody's not paying attention to God's schedule. Because he's coming at an hour that you think not. So most people love the world and they're going after the cares of this life, even through the coronavirus. It says friendship with the world's enemies against God. I'm stepping on my own feet. So they go, they, you know, at the end, five, five, five versions had oil, five didn't. Five were preparing, five didn't. Okay. What does that mean? Well, people, you know, I, I I say to myself, I say, wow, wow, how does some of these churches not see what's going on and at least pick up the Bible and try to search out and say, let me see, did God say something about this? You you you're that close. You're preaching to a congregation, and you can't say to yourself, hey, let me self, let me let me pick up the Bible and see it's the coronavirus or something. And then and you hear some of these pastors saying, no, it's not. It's not this coronavirus is a sign. I, only reason why I say it's not a sign because it's because they made it up. I mean, they made they didn't make it up. It still exists, but they over over hyped it. But is this still God telling us that there should be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes? Even if man did it. It's still famines, pestilence, and earthquakes, and wars, and rumors of wars. It's still, even if man did all. The wrath of God is not yet. We're not doing the wrath of God. So even fooling people could be considered a judgment. It says, evil men will wax worth, deceiving and being deceived. So they're deceiving the general public to believe that stuff is bigger than it is. More dangerous than it is, more powerful than it is, but in reality, 
they're scaring us out of our own country. So what what's going on? What do I see happening in the next couple of days? I don't know. I, I, I like sunny days. I like to wake up to sunny days. So the more I can, I'm 51 years old. So let me, I don't love the world. Don't, don't get me wrong. But let me enjoy as many days as I can before they, all the bomb drops. Before all things go to hell in a, in a handbasket. Uh, just like I said on the last video, they're spoofing. Uh, Facebook has spoofing. So what they're doing is I noticed that they're just, they, they're, they're playing with the numbers. And um, the numbers are being played with. So in, in, in other words, if, there's, if there are people in your chat room, I noticed they bring them all the way down. And they don't mess with my, um, they don't mess with my frequency, um, my, my, uh, stagnation. They don't stagnate me like they do Mary Collie, <coughs> but, um, they do play with the numbers and they do cut me off at their certain time. Like one video, they just cut me off really quickly. I don't know if it's somebody in their living room who's still working at home and they, and they can, they can monitor certain people, um, I'm pretty sure they got more than hundreds of people that are doing this. And and they they watch your videos and they can press one button and make it come go down. They can make the numbers go down. They can do all kinds of stuff. They can make it so only a few people are watching, you know. And I you you might think, well, Phil's videos aren't that dangerous. I mean, he's not talking about, you know, poisonous water or crit chemtrails or or the Georgia Capstones, or he's not talking about COVID being a hoax. He's not talking about any of that stuff. So we got to let Phil stay on. But he's the more dangerous than the people who say, because I'm talking to, I'm, I'm speaking the gospel. And see, that's who they're coming after. They're coming after Christians. They're coming after Christians, and they're going to prosecute Christians. And if you read um, Matthew uh, 24, verse 1 through 7, those are the signs we're in now. But verse 8 says these are the beginning of birth pains, meaning this is the beginning of the tribulation period. And then it says immediately, it says you should be handed over uh, to the to the council, to the, to, the, to the leaders, and they will kill you. And then the love of many shall wax worse and worse. Right now I'm looking dead at a tower that used to be in our park, city park. And now, I think I shared that with you guys yesterday. Now they're putting 5G on the top. I went over there and asked the guy, I said, is that 5G? Oh, no, not not the AT&T part, the one we're working on. But is it, is it 5G? No, not the not the part we're working on. So, okay, it's 5G then. And then I walked away. <laughs> walked away. But uh, 5G, to me, is going to be a lot more than we think it is. It's going to control man's behaviors. It's going to make men and women fight and kill the kill their spouse. It's going it's going to make people act crazy. I think what they were doing is testing it. Like for instance, down in Texas, Fort Fort Hood, and then now I might get cut off. In Fort Hood, um, people's bodies, military soldiers' bodies, is coming up missing and cut. All of them been cut in half. You know, cut in pieces. So, what if five G causes that to happen? I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm just. I'm just saying. I, I've been thinking this for a while. They started building this thing a year ago. This ain't the world's tallest building, so you have to take a whole year to build this thing. Come on, come on. They here every morning. And I'm like watching them right now and they got wires everywhere and they got this fence around the big tower. It's a pretty little green tower with the hawk on it. It's supposed to be my kid's uh, mascot. It's supposed to be my kid's mascot. And it's a pretty little tower, but it's got 5G on the top of it. So look for the people to start acting like nuts when they turn the 5G on. And I think they're going to turn the 5G on right after the rapture of the church. And when millions of people vanish, we're going to brainwash you. Because I remember watching a video or a movie. Not, not, not even that. Sorry. Let's go back. 
I was watch, listening to George Norrie, or Art Bell. That's when Art Bell was still doing, doing the show at nighttime. And he was talking about towers everywhere. And it's influencing people's behavior, influencing the weather, influencing the electronics, influencing your health, influencing all this stuff. And then that's what I was saying the other day. God brought it to my attention. He said, I said, okay, the other month, a couple of months ago, even before this stuff started happening. He says, um, Matthew 24, verse 1 to 7 is where we at now. But verse 9 says, and then you be handed over to be prosecuted by the con by consuls and judges. But it says, the love of many will wax worse. And I was scratching my head. What's the difference? Just because millions of people disappear, that people are going to start hating each other, they should be supporting each other. So I started thinking about 5G and, and, and technology and say, is that, is that, and, and, and you know, television still is always going to play a part in mind control. But is, are these things causing people to hate each other? And then you already have a breakdown in the system, survival of the fittest. So that's really going to cause people to hate each other. I've been watching like, like, people at the malls and these people were in a sandwich shop and this girl y'all probably saw it too this girl's pushing the pushing the glass and just pushing just acting unruly i was like they must have turned on the 5g in that building because she acted crazy or the late the girls at the airport just going off and see and see maybe it wasn't that maybe it was just a lot of this black lives matter rhetoric and and they're falling into it and they fall into drinking the Kool Aid, but they have, you know, the mankind has no way out because not only they brainwash you on the news and the television. I'm gonna call my mom because my sister is telling me my she watches CNN and, and she can't stand Trump. I said, Mom, Mama, you can't be rapture hating somebody. I don't care if it's the president of the United States or whoever. Yeah, and I'm gonna call her. She probably she probably listen to me. I don't know. I, I'm gonna call her and pray for her first, and then I'm gonna call her. But Folks, we in the end time. Feast of Trumpets. Um, first time I ever said the date, and I'm not going to say the date too much, but it's a two-day event. That's why no man knows the day and hour. The, the two witnesses, which I believe Moses and, and Elijah, will come down right after the rapture, and they will go into the Sanhedrin, and, and uh, or they might come down before. And, um, and they're going to go into the Sanhedrin and say, we have seen the moon. And then they're going to say, they're going to bring them in one at a time. Say, what did you see? How big was the moon? Where did you see it at? Where did you see it? How did you see it? And then, you know, they, they're two separate witnesses. And and there, the rapture would take place two days later. Now, this sounds crazy, but we're going to find out when, on, when um, the rapture is 2020. Hindsight is 2020. We get there, we're going to find out that, hey, we could have knew the exact time. Now, before y'all destroy me and throw pies in my face, just because we got it wrong sometimes don't mean we're the, we're the Antichrist. Just because we got the days wrong. Some people got the days wrong. The Bible never said, thou should not have a bad date set. Okay, so eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. What's one's worse? <laughs> His disciples left. Did he go after them? You 12, go get those 72 guys. <laughs> <laughs> did he have to go after him? No, he didn't. He didn't go after him. So how is it the hair cap is so bad? I'm just still trying to figure that out. I get it. You know, people get so happy and so generous, but he doesn't come. He gets so happy and generous, he doesn't come. And then he gets so happy. And what about the people who, when Paul was here? He had to write letters to them. He said, you should know very well that you, the day of the Lord should come as a thief in the night. He already told them that stuff. They didn't, they didn't quit. They didn't stop. They were prosecuting them back then. They ain't not prosecuting America yet. How is it that we stop? We, we, oh, they're going to, you're going to hurt. Just picking a day and guessing the day and hour can, is, can be really dangerous. How? You get your feelings hurt? If you walk away from God for that, I get it. Cause I, I was crushed at one point. One year I was crushed. I get what they're saying, but feelings, getting your feelings hurt is not the problem. Dying without Christ is the problem. So, so I get what they're saying that some people will walk away, but people are going to walk away anyway. Matter of fact, right after the rapture, 
remember, this is my view of the rapture, is that not everybody in the church is going. So what's, what do you think is going to happen to the ones who get left behind? A lot of them are going to get on fire for God, but a lot of them are going to walk away. Some shall depart from the faith, okay? They're going to depart from the faith. So five virgins, five foolish virgins, probably half of the foolish virgins are probably going to walk away from God. And the other half is going to end up by dying in the first half of the tribulation period. It says in the seals, it says that even in chapter 6, before the the, the beginning of the, set, the, the trumpets, that Christians are at the altar already. I never saw that. This year is the first time I ever saw that as much as I read read that. I have never thought, I, my brain has never crossed my mind that Matthew chapter um, 24, verse 9, it hasn't crossed my mind that the first half of the tribulation period will be that bad. It never crossed my mind. I thought the Antichrist is going to be some superhero flying in to save the day and everything's going to be great and everybody's going to be rich and Babylon's going to be great. As long as you're keeping his rules. As long as you're keeping the Antichrist rules. Now, let me ask you a question. Lordship salvation, right? That's what they call it. Lordship salvation. It's false. Okay, so the Antichrist is going to get you to do whatever you he wants you to do. Oh, that's lordship right there. So Jesus is not Lord and Savior. He's just Savior. But you're Lord, right? <laughs> that angers me. Okay, you're going to be forced to do whatever the Antichrist tells you to do. But but now, before the rapture, Jesus is not Lord. He's just Savior. He just, he just, he just saved me. I'm just using him for salvation, but I don't have to do what he says. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. So if you know, if you see the day approaching, Feast of Trumpets, nobody is aware of the Feast of Trumpets yet. Nobody even, it's not even on nobody's radar. And I'm not surprised. What do you think the devil's going to do? Now think about this for a minute. Jesus died on the cross on Passover, was putting the tube on unleavened bread, rose from the dead on first fruit, and the church was formed on Pentecost. Let me scratch my head, because I don't... Are you telling me the Feast of Trumpet is next? But that's, the devil's going to be like, oh, yeah, um, but that's at the end of the tribulation period, so you don't have to worry about that. No, it's now. Because he said, for the Lord himself to descend from the clouds with a loud shout and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive with the land shall be caught up and meet the Lord in the air. First Corinthians 15, 51 we should not all sleep. He says, I'll show you a mystery. We should not all sleep, but we should be changed in a moment in the twinkle of an eye at the last trumpet. When is the last trumpet? It's Feast of Trumpets, a hundred trumpet blasts, the last trumpet. He tells you the exact second he's coming. Think about this for a second. If y'all do y'all study of the Feast of Trumpets, y'all know, y'all probably figure out it has 20 names to it. And one of the names is no man knows the day and hour. When Jesus Christ was telling them, he says, I'm coming back at the Feast of Trumpets. They understood that because that was, that, that was what it, it's based on the Jewish mar marriage. So it's known as the day of the doors. So the doors are either going to be open or shut for you. You make the call. It's known as the judgment of the world. It's, on, on, it's known as the coronation of the king. There's plenty of names. So go, go research the Feast of Trumpets. Um, it's a two-day event. There's a hundred trumpet blasts through the two days. On the last day, there's one long trumpet blow. It's called the last trumpet. At the twinkling of an eye, it's not saying, oh, he's going to come back. General Electric says this is one twelfth of a second. Yeah, that's true. He is coming back one twelfth of a second or something like that. But the, 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 the twinkling of an eye is from one day to the next. It's, it's on, it's in America, it's three, two, one, happy new year. So at one, at zero, that's the twinkling of an eye. But see, in Israel, the twinkling of an eye re requires the sun goes down to a certain glimmer. So it might not be 6.30 in the evening there, but it's when the sun goes down. So you're not sitting here in America looking for the rapture at a specific time. You're not going to get it. But what you get is around that time. For me, for and that's why I, I believe Sunday. He said, "Judgment should begin in the house of the Lord." This year, for America and the most Gentiles, 
Feast of Trumpets will end on a Sunday. But for the Jewish people, it'll end at the synagogue on Saturday. So if it's this year, the Feast of Trumpets for us, I'll be headed to church that morning. A lot of people will be, be in church that time. And a lot of people will be leaving church that time. So you so you you're crazy, Phil. Whenever it comes, whenever the rapture comes, it'll be at the Feast of Trumpets. If it's this year, the signs are there. And when it happens, we're going to see the day approaching. Just like you drive into Atlanta, you can see all the tall buildings. Oh, there's Atlanta. Okay. Oh, man. Let's, let's stop at the stops right quick. And then we're going to get back on the road. So we almost headed to the family reunion. And whoa, those are the big tall buildings. And here it is. We're going to see it coming. You got to get ready, though. You can't go off the basis of one save, always save, and we don't need to repent. You have to repent. You have to get close to God. Most of it is to sit at the feet of Jesus. Just sit there. Just sit at the feet. I'm talking to myself. Just sit there at the feet of Jesus. God, is there anything you want me to say I'm sorry for? Is there anything? And, and some people can even go, this is the only time you can be reckless. Is <laughs> when you're just asking for forgiveness for stuff you already... He said, well, you're not supposed to only ask for forgiveness twice. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you end the faith. Make sure you examine yourself. You know, when, when you got a body part and you feel a lump here, you go to the doctor and try to figure out what that lump is. If you have any feelings towards any, anybody, if you if you if you angry towards somebody, if you if you feel if you feel bitterness towards somebody, ask God to forgive you for that and ask God to heal you. Um, if if you're lustful, ask God to forgive you. If you gluttony, I'm a big guy. I don't eat very much. Matter of fact, what did I eat? Hash browns, two hash browns. I don't eat. I got money. I just don't eat very much. But I I, I maintain my weight because I don't eat. I need to eat salads and good foods. I get man. One time I was losing weight. I lost like sixty pounds. I got tired of eating because you got to eat good foods, but you got to keep eating to get that body to burn, right? Especially if you ain't doing nothing. And gluttony was one of the things God brought to me. He said, "You don't have that problem." He said, "You don't have that problem," but. You know, it's still good to say, you know, God, give me help, you know, um, anger, you know, hating Trump. <laughs> most different, most Christians don't hate Trump, though. Most true Christians don't hate Trump, but hating, a, hating the Democratic Party, hating, hating Black Lives Matter, hating, hating organizations, hating people, hating the New World Order, hating mask wearing. You have to make sure you got your heart right. And Christ is coming back in a few weeks. If he, I mean, I, I, I still use the word if, but if he is, but I know I, I have a hard time saying if, because I, I believe he's coming back. And when you, when, when you're asking for repentance for these things, ask God to take selfishness out of your heart. Be thankful in everything, everything, everything you think of, just be thankful. Every, all, you know, it says in Peter, it says, um, think on these things, you know. Think on things that are lovely, things that are good, things that are great. And, 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 and have a repentant heart and a prayerful spirit for these people. Don't be so hatred towards Black Lives Matter. Pray for them. And I'm, I'm talking to myself. I'm like, my country's being taken. Took it, taken, took it. My country is being eliminated. But I can't sit up here hating anybody. I have to get ready for Christ's return. I ha He's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. So the things you think God ain't forgiving you for, lean on that that he's forgiving you. Believe the word of God, but don't do it. For anybody sipping, stop sipping. For anybody cripping, don't crip. If anybody's sneaking, don't sneak. Stop. Stop now. Please. I'm talking to myself. Stop. If you got bad thoughts, this is a bad thing right here because it's hard because you train your brain to think the way it thinks. So now God has to rescue you really quickly. All, you know, he says, casting, casting down imaginations that everything exalts itself against the knowledge of God. 
And a lot of things exalts itself. One of the things is idolatry. Putting things before God. If you have a troubled kid at home, bring it to the Lord. If your marriage is in trouble, bring it to the Lord. If you find that your issues, bring it to the Lord. Don't focus in on the storm. Focus in on Jesus. Because the, when you focus in on the storm, you sink. And then Jesus has to pull you back up. But he will. But focus in on Jesus in these last days. Put your faith and trust in God. Not on the things of this world. It says um, in Luke 21, it says, don't be overcharged with surfeiting, with drunkenness and the cares of this life. That that day should overtake you as a thief. The day is coming. Well, and I don't know. I don't. I know man is going to see it coming. That doesn't mean they have to say the Feast of Trumpets is it. They just see it coming. You don't have to say Feast of Trumpets is it. It's, it's it. Oh, my God. You know, you just say you can see it coming. You see it coming. And right now, if the sun is out in your city, enjoy it. Enjoy it. If Go out to the park if you can to a picnic. Have a, have a barbecue or something. Just enjoy your family this weekend. Enjoy your family. If you're watching this video and you're saved, preach the gospel. Pray for people. Seek the Lord. Get on, get, get, you can get in the kitchen and cook, but you can get at the knees of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can get at the knees, of, get at the feet of Jesus. And when you're done, get up, go through something. You could be Mary and Martha all at the same time. Be Mar 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 Martha first, or uh, uh, Mary first, and then Martha second. Because you need to be at the feet of Jesus if you're going to do anything for God. And, and don't think in these last days that you got to have big numbers. I got uh, my new, uh, my new um, Facebook little icon is uh, preach to who, preach to one person. If you can preach, if you have to preach to one person, do it. So do it. So anyway, Feast of Trumpets, 2020, 2021. One of those days. No man knows the day and hour. That's what it's known as. No man knows the day and hour. You have to, you have to see the slither of the moon. And the two witnesses have to go in and say to the Sanhedrin separately, this was the warning. Then they begin to blow a hundred trumpets. And on a hundred trumpet, it's called the last trumpet. This year is on 9-20-2020. Speaking of seeing, 9-20-2020. <clears throat> People will see after that day that not everybody... Who called me Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of God. Only he who done the will of God. So do the will of God these last 60 something days or 300 and whatever days. But my best guess is from what I see and what I feel in my heart, it looks like it's close. Very close. So speak to your family. Pray for your family. Speak to your friends. Pray for your friends. Uh, Feast of Trumpets is on September um on twentieth. Uh actually it's on it starts September eighteenth to the nineteenth. But you go on in Israel's time, so you convert it over to our time, it's 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 a day ahead, so it'll be nineteenth and twentieth. So for us, um in six PM, like I said before, I don't know what's gonna be happening in September. I can't tell you. You don't give me the lie to you. But one of the things I believe, this is just a, this is just me saying it. It's not God saying, Phil, this is what's going to happen. Um, is a Russian invasion on a holiday. I've always thought that, a Jewish feast. Russia will invade Israel or could invade Israel on a Jewish feast. Don't look for it because the rapture might just happen with not, nothing happening. Um, also, what I think is going to happen in September is there going to be reports of things that are coming upon the earth. Remember it says in Luke 21, man's heart's felling them for fear of the things that are coming. And we're having heart attacks. So we might hear of things that are coming our way. Maybe the president will come out and say there are meteorites or meteor showers headed this way, or maybe terror cells begin to hit 
certain places in America and then we think it's going to keep going. I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. But I, I believe in my heart that one Feast of Trumpets, whatever year it is, will be the rapture of the church. And the whole, and either two, couple of things going to happen. Either all the Christians are going to catch on and, and, and the, either going to be the five wise and the five foolish versions or five. I did a video this morning talking about knowledge. What are you going to do with it on the internet? And then five were wise. So they went to the Bible and they prayed and they sat at the feet of Jesus and five were foolish. Oh, they just looked at the videos and they just looked at the news. Oh man, God, he's coming, but we don't have to repent. And they get left behind. So God is talking about cleaning your robes. See, the people who get left behind of the church will clean their robes in, in the tribulation period. And the God says, I know, and I saw them and they had stuff on their, on, their, on their robes, but they cleaned their robe. They cleaned their own robe. How does that happen? Well, they wash themselves in the blood of Jesus and they say, here I am. You know, here I am, God. Clean me and wash me. And I read you guys... Um, Malachi chapter three is talking about gold and silver and in the gold part where he refines us and purifies us. And it says in Ephesians chapter five, that for the washing and the regeneration of the word, when you read that word and you're praying and you're in, 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 in relationship with God and the secret things, what about the secret things? If I could sit here, I could tell you guys all my secret stuff and I won't blush. Why? If I can't tell you guys right now, cause y'all, y'all, you know, you're going to be at, everybody out there going to be at my judgment and I'm going to be at yours and you're going to be at everybody else's as here to judgment. How do you, how does that work? How does God, how could God do that? Do you see the picture of the universe? <laughs> do you see, do you see my, me, me and your brain and our head and, and it, it takes 16 years to go to operate on us. They, man can't create humans. We great, we great. So can you imagine? I'm at your at your judgment. You're at my judgment. Everybody's at everybody's judgment at one time. <laughs> so if I can't, if, if 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 my if by the time the rapture happens, if I haven't repented of all the stuff that I need to see, people think, well, one time you repent. Yeah, you do. You can bring when you first get saved, you bring a whole load of sins to God, drop them at His doorstep. <laughs> you say, you say, forgive me for all these sins. He's forgiven you, right? But the course of of walking with God, it's like the course of being married. If you just go off your vows, your marriage is going to be in trouble if you never say you're sorry. Okay, your wife and your husband, your husband and wife has to say they're sorry to each other. You have to say you're sorry to a dog when it steps on the tail. My cat seems to be good at that in the kitchen. And I'm saying, I'm sorry to my cat. And my cat don't understand English. <laughs> I'm sorry, cat, for stepping on your tail. How are you not going to say I'm sorry to God? So what I'm saying is for you, most of it, it's for God too. It says, you and you only have I sinned against you, God, in, in, um, in, in Psalms 51. It says, I only sinned, to, you only have I sinned against you. Of course, you have sinned against other people. And God wants you to go apologize. But David was just saying, I, you, you have I only sinned against, I sinned against you, God. So I have to say, I'm sorry. So even if it looks ridiculous and you're saying, oh, I, I might have already said I'm sorry about that. But anyway, God, I'm still saying I'm sorry. And then somebody will come on here and say, oh, no, you're not supposed to say you're sorry twice. <laughs> I say I'm sorry for sins I don't know about. I'm going to stay close to God. Maybe I'm not Maybe I'm not always saying I'm sorry every two seconds, but Paul said every day I'm washing myself, making sure I'm clean and examining myself every day. Jesus said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. The barrier cross is to say, okay, God, here I am. I'm, I'm bringing my sins before you. If I had a bad thought, if I, if I, if I got mad at somebody, or if, if I'm, if I'm, you know, you have to deal with bitterness. Okay, you have to deal with bitterness on a daily basis, but you should you should also ask God to take it out completely. And, and if you if you have to go apologize to somebody, go apologize to somebody. But if God says you don't have to, just for your sake, be forgiven. And I mentioned this, I'm gonna go get off this video. But if you hate the Democratic Party or if you hate Donald Trump, you know that could be considered hate. That could keep you behind. You say that's gonna leave make, make me left behind. Now, if you hating the pedophiles because 
they're doing this to kids or you you're i mean then you have to turn around and hate the moms for for um and i agree i mean come on that's a good reason to hate somebody <laughs> but you got to turn around and hate the moms who do abortion do you really hate the moms who do abortion no but i could pick and choose i mean i can't stand abor uh, uh pedophiles i'm gonna be honest with you but am i mad at them i have for my sake i have to clear my heart and, and ask God to get, just give me, just let me just block that out because I, I, I don't want to, you know, flee, flee lust. Lust could be hate, burning mad anger too. Okay, I'm not going to pay attention to these people, but I'm mad at them. <laughs> but I'm not going to pay attention to them either. Anyway, God bless everybody out there. Y'all have a wonderful day. And if I don't get to meet you in person, I'll meet you in the air. God bless.